welcome, folks. My name is uh, Bart. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the legacy uh, or AS400. Uh, IBM I system, um, whatever you call it, uh, the guys at IBM get, uh, I think, uh, pretty nice uh, bonuses for changing the names every few years. Uh, I'll call it AS400 uh, from now on. Um, short introduction, uh, well, I'm Googleable, so you can uh, check my LinkedIn profile, you can check my uh, Twitter. Um, I'm Polish national, living in the Netherlands, um, and whatever I present here is um, my personal views and not always or not necessarily uh, those of uh, my employee. So um, why should we care about legacy or about ACE 400? Um, it's legacy, um, but it's hard to get rid of. Um, usually if you're working in a um, finance institution, uh, you'll see you have a lot of data, a lot of customer data, um, a lot of uh, old programs, and it's uh, very difficult with all that history. Uh, for example, if you have insurance policies or bank accounts, it's very difficult to migrate it to new environments. So what you see very often is that you have new shiny front ends, and at the very back end you have still um, uh, mainframe systems running because they are um, just good uh, for uh, what they do. Um, so many times uh, we do care about the front end, so we don't care about the uh, back end. And um, that leads to um, uh, the situation that the uh, back ends are somewhat less secure than the front end. Um, still, uh, to my surprise, a lot of um, ACE 400 systems are accessible. Um, um, well, even uh, via internet, as uh, F SMTP servers, for example, or sometimes if you go to a retailer, you can see a 50 to 50 screen uh, somewhere. Um, you can really uh, find them everywhere. I mean, all banks, uh, insurance institutions. Uh, if you just Google that, um, you, you'll find a lot of AS400 systems. And uh, there was a great talk at uh, Black Hat uh, back in uh, 2006 uh, by um, Shalom Carmel, um, talking about uh, security of um, Ace 100 systems. And um, to be honest with you, not much change from IBM perspective. I haven't seen uh, too much changes in um, uh, new measures or new implementations. Um, there are still say uh, uh, there there is still like this 1990s mentality we have a green screen and it's secure enough um there is not too much um new developments um from IBM itself there is some patching but uh, uh i would say not too much from my perspective so uh if you want to um, start your, um, well, um, some joy with uh, AS400, uh, you can either buy one. Uh, I recently bought one on uh, uh, eBay for just 60 bucks. Uh, I couldn't find uh, 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 that cheap one now, but uh, every now and then you can find a cheap AS400 system just to start. Uh, or you can just uh, hack one. Um, if you go to Shodan uh, IO, uh, you'll find a lot of ACE 400 systems open. Uh, it's just an example from last week. Uh, I was able to get access to an Italian uh, uh, coffee maker ACE 400, which was just fully exposed to the internet with default password for one of the system profiles. So you could just log in and enjoy the system. And um, um, f funny enough, uh, most of the systems exposed to the web are like version 5 release 2, uh, which is outdated for years. Uh, but then somehow they keep it. They, ju they just put it on the web and forget it. All right. Um, so um, um, again, going, uh, going to the uh, security of the S400 systems, 
Um, there was a talk from uh, from Shalom um, about the 50 to 50 security. Um, I want to talk about uh, something else. Um, I want to focus on Java. Um, why? Uh, because uh, it comes together with uh, the AS400 um, uh, client access. Um, and it gives you pretty much a um, um, lot of access to, um, um, to the system. Um, if you look at the IBM toolbox for Java, um, it allows for remote system API calls um, or usage of comments. Uh, so you can basically um, compile your programs in Java externally. You don't have to write your programs in CL or RPG on a system. So you can uh, basically, um, um, yeah, try whatever you wish, run it via Java, use the toolbox for Java Connect, and um, uh, make use of the system remotely. Um, it bypasses some of the 50 to 50 limitations, like the limited capability, so you basically get access to the command line um, or to the, 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 the CL commands. It also bypasses the iSeries navigator restrictions, so for example, if you um, if you have set up in iSeries Navigator that the users cannot log in via 50 to 50 or they cannot download files or they cannot access LDBC, yeah, you can bypass that with Java, with your own Java uh, functions. Um, again, it gives you the flexibility of um, uh, working with uh, H100 outside the system, uh, so no need to access any development tools uh, on the box itself. Um, if you decompile the JT400 uh, given by IBM, it's generally poorly written. Um, it's, it's quite inconsistent. So uh, sometimes they use API calls. Sometimes they just used uh, silly CL comments uh, in the background. So um, um, I found some bugs in that. Uh, so you basically, I, I had to circumvent it by writing my own functions. So um, really, uh, um, I encourage you to de decompile and check. Um, and what's most important, uh, somehow Java handles the authorization on the server side differently than you would expect uh, from a usual program. Um, I will give you a short demo about the availability. Um, so uh, first we're gonna um, um, connect to the system. Um, Okay, so that that user does not have um, access to the comments. Um, I have uh, four profiles, four hot chicks on the system. Okay, that one has signed off, so you cannot even log in. And many admins I talk to, they say, "Hey, if you have signed off, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, connect interactively to the system." Bullshit. Okay, so this one gives you already some uh, more rights. Uh, we have access to the command line, so you can see basically that's that's all the profiles I can see with uh, with that system uh, with uh, with that user profile. Um, I'll also uh, go to. Um, Okay, so these are the libraries uh, we can see. Uh, it's mostly the uh, system libraries. Okay, so now uh, let's switch to, um, to Java tool. So I'll connect uh, with... Uh, Oh, 
takes a while. All right, connected. So um, when we go now to work with objects and we say uh, we want to see all objects from QSIS and they are user profiles. And you can see already more profiles than via 50 to 50. So basically, um, uh, the Java handles the authorizations uh, in a different way. And although uh, you're not directly authorized to some object, you can still um, um, enumerate them uh, for further use. Also, if you uh, will try to enumerate libraries, you will also see that there are some additional libraries which were not visible via 50 to 50. So as you already can see, there is a difference in uh, authorization handling between Java and 50 to 50. Um, Okay, um, if I connect with um, the sign off profile, I can also get access to the system, even though it's sign off. So uh, don't believe your admins if they say uh, sign off means you cannot use that profile to access the system. All right, but that's, uh, um, uh, that's only uh, visibility, but uh, we want to do something more, namely, we want to escalate privileges. And um, say, um, in the old times, uh, you had to um, have a prof, uh, you had to have a program that was compiled with adopted authority, or you had to use the um, APIs uh, and still compile on the system to be able to um, uh, escalate privileges. Now we can use Java. Um, the thing is that, um, if you use group profiles, which is um, uh, typical for every uh, larger application, you usually have like one common profile, um, which is used for uh, um, uh, um, for all the uh, business accounts, uh, so to say. And many times uh, you uh, add privileges by just having supplemental group profiles. Um, that's the setup I've seen in most business applications, uh, both uh, banking and insurance applications. Uh, not sure about wholesale retail applications, but probably it will be the same. Many times what you see is that um, the ownership um, for the user is set to group profile for one simple reason. Uh, you don't want to have the situation that uh, if one user leaves and their account is deleted, all the objects will belong to that user, because that will mean a lot of problems. So many times you see a default setup that the ownership is within the group profile, and the scripts from um, uh, business applications, they also create a profiles with the ownership of the group profile. So um, if you use that setup, and um, you have a lot of users, um, it's likely that you will also have some admin users. It's also likely that you will have some users that switch between departments and they might have some um, extra rights uh, you would not expect. And it's also likely that you not closely monitor the profile handle swapping. Um, why it's quite challenging to monitor. So um, uh, again, using Java, um, there is no need to create uh, and compile a program on H400. 
So you can just jump remotely. You can just use the um, uh, profile handle APIs, um, grab the profile handle, switch to the profile, and then repeat until you're happy uh, with your access level. Um, the setup of um, this system for the presentation is as follows. We have one common group, which is DEFCON 23. Uh, we have one group for hot chicks and one group for fat boys. Um, we have a couple of uh, hot chicks um, and we have a couple of, we have a couple of uh, fat boys, which are the admins on the system. So what we're going to do, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we also have uh, Hot Chick 69, uh, which is, uh, um, which is null to admin. So migrated from the fat boys group. Okay. Um, so let's uh, try to uh, escalate the privileges. And since uh, I like uh, one click solutions, uh, uh, I made some extra uh, implementation. Uh, okay, so uh, let me log in with, uh, say, uh, hot uh, chick uh, oh, 01. Perhaps just to show the just to show you that uh, there is no fake uh, authorities here. It's uh, that's a hot chick one, so it has only the group profile, DEFCON 23 and supplemental group hot chicks. No special authorities and uh, hot chick user profiles cannot create any other profiles. So um, if I just log in with any of the hot chicks like hot chick 03, if I do create user profile, I'll get the error message. Okay, so uh, let's uh, log in with perhaps the same hot chick L3. Uh, oh, sorry, we are already connected. Okay, uh, we can connect again. Okay, still thinking. All right, connected. So, um, Let's generate the user lists we can see. And that's the user, that's the list of users we can actually jump to. Um, not really to this queue profiles, uh, uh, that's locked by the system, but uh, we can, uh, um, we can switch to some of the other um, uh, profiles. Um, let me uh, switch to the hot chick 69, uh, which is the uh, admin profile that moved to, um, um, uh, to the hot chick group. Okay, so I just click in hot chick 69, I click in escalate privileges. And as you can see, I successfully escalated privileges. So um, if I go now to, um, to the system, um, And I'll search for the job. Oh, for one, one, seven, two. Okay. Okay. Um, let me escalate from hot chick sixty nine now. Or I'm es since uh, I es escalated. Let me generate the user list once again. 
So you can already see that I have access to a much longer list of uh, users. And as you could uh, expect, uh, we love this one. So let's just click once again. And as you can see, we escalated now to QSIC offer. Okay, and um, uh, let's okay, that's not handy. Uh, let me see whether. I can you see the whole screen now, or? And now? I'll just reset. Yeah. Okay, so I just run a comment, and now using the QSIC offer, I created the user profile. Uh, you cannot just see the, uh, the there is one button uh, run, so uh, it's on the right side. Uh, so um, if I go now back to the system, um, you can see the uh, newly created user profile. So that's something you can do with Java. You don't have, uh, you don't need to have any extra program. All right. Um, okay. What's uh, also interesting? Um, I don't have a demo for that, but um, uh, surely you can you can try on your systems. By the way, this. This tool link uh, is already available online. Uh, at the end of the presentation, there will be a link, basically hackthelegacy.org, and there you can find a link to GitHub where the, um, uh, where the tool link is um, uh, uploaded. Uh, I'll make some updates uh, in the coming weeks, uh, but you can uh, always contact me if you have any questions. Um, for um, part two, the nested comment use, um, um, again, um, using Java gives you a lot of uh, um, uh, possible options. You can uh, you can run CL comments. You can run um, uh, JDBC queries. Um, you can also use the system APIs. And uh, what's most fun is you can combine uh, combine all of those. So um, many times what you see is um, um, you use commercial programs to like um, um, block access to ODBC via uh, using exit points, um, or uh, you use um, um, your own exit points to to limit uh, um, accessibility to, to some system functions. Um, Usually, um, there is a lot of focus for uh, external connections. Um, but um, if you connect via Java, and if you try, say, um, run a query from the system, um, it will not detect that there is any outgoing traffic outside the system, because it will be basically rerouted internally from the system to the GVM and then outside. So uh, in that way, you can circumvent, for example, your ODBC uh, limitation on um, uh, connections. I put here a small um, uh, example for um, um, calling uh, that kind of query via Java. Uh, so basically what you do is uh, you run the uh, well-known uh, uh, Q comment exec. 
in that uh, you go to um, um, Q shell, so you uh, um, you insert Q shell command, and then inside that you do DB2 and then select, uh, and then you put RFON just to get some uh, some output in uh, on your uh, printer device. Um, and in that way, um, basically the DB2 will connect to localhost, uh, meaning the exit point that will be triggered will check, okay, is there any external connection from, um, uh, from host to, um, to DB2? No, there isn't. There is only one on localhost. So, okay. Go. So um, in that way, you can uh, you can nest the uh, um, nasty commands, and again, you can circumvent the uh, uh, some of the exit points if they are poorly written. And um, to be honest, I checked a number of uh, um, exit points. Um, uh, um, sorry, exit uh, exit program uh, software. And um, yeah, like uh, Rosli, for example, uh, if if that's uh, um, if it's known for you, and uh, these programs many times have some unknown vulnerabilities, like um, they are case sensitive, for example, for JDBC. So um, um, I would say uh, use the tools um, to try the nested com uh, nested command use, and then depending on what uh, what protection you use for exit points, you might be able to circumvent or test whether you can circumvent the uh, the exit points. Okay, um, the next, um, and I think uh, perhaps the most interesting part is the password security and hash grabbing. Um, that's something which uh, I was not known uh, before. Um, um, there is uh, one API um, offered by IBM called uh, Q Syrup uh, PVD to grab the uh, hashes. It's used for synchronizing uh, um, hashes between or passwords between uh, systems. Um, basically, using that API, but also using uh, um, well, from version six uh, um, and the common to dump. Uh, um, uh, user profile. You can uh, you can get uh, uh, hashes from um, a particular user. Well, the output format was uh, proprietary and it was never published. Uh, I contacted IBM and uh, um, uh, what they said. Uh, IBM does not document the format of QSERP VD, uh, nor do we plan to document the output format. Obviously. Um, so uh, after a long exchange of emails with Rochester, um, uh, well, there was no deny from their side to publish it, uh, uh, but so uh, um, no, no word on whether they will fix it or they will change anything. Um, if you go to the um, 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 API. Depending on your Q password level uh, system value, uh, you may be able to retrieve uh, different hashes from the system. Um, uh, if you look at the security guide from IBM, um, somehow they still don't uh, uh, enforce uh, the usage of uh, Q password level um, three. So if you use Q password level zero, one, or two, you'll still be able to get the um, DAS hashes or the um, um, LM hashes. Um, you have to be sec admin and all object though. So um, um, yeah, um, take the lesson and escalate the privileges first. Um, but then afterwards, uh, you can grab the hashes uh, using the Q server PFD. Um, basically, if you look at the IBM documentation, the only state, um, what you get as output is the encrypted user password data. That's it. I looked closer into that format, and actually what you can see is um, the first um, um, eight bytes is uh, the DES 56-bit uh, uh, um, uh, password substitute. Uh, so you can look at RFC 2877 to see how it's uh, actually created. Um, 
Um, then the third position is LM hash, which is uh, quite interesting for uh, for us. Um, and then there is uh, there is a bunch of other um, um, hashes you can get. So um, based on that format, what you can do again use Java, um, use the API, and grab some, grab some hashes. And we'll try to do it now. Let me just, uh, for the sake of time saving, I'll just use the fat boy uh, uh, 03 or 02. Makes no difference. Yeah. Normally, we could just escalate the probabilities to fat boy or to QC cover. Okay, so uh, let's generate the user list. And let's say, uh, mm, let's pick one uh, profile. Um, for example, Neil's profile. And uh, since that guy is sitting here in the audience, so. Uh, he will know whether he has to change the password afterward. Okay, and again, one click solution, grab the hash. So here you can see uh, all the hashes I was talking about. And um, unfortunately, I cannot move the, um, uh, the screen. Uh, okay. Um, so what uh, what I can do is just uh, with that lm hash, I just save it and I run my favorite uh, John four hundred. So the password, the password is Paris 2015. Uh. <laughs> Just to make the proof, Paris 2015, and we are locked. Hey guys. Go on, go on. He's <laughs> got a demo coming up. I just fu I just finished the demo, so. Uh. Hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Off here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Keep talking. <laughs> Newbies. <laughs> All right. So um, again, um, we talked to IBM on that, and uh, IBM was uh, not really reactive. Um, so uh, I hope if there is any IBM representatives here, uh, perhaps uh, you want to <laughs> you want to talk after the, uh, the the talk. Okay. Um, so um, I also have some uh, other research um, based, uh, well, uh, focusing on the Java isolation. And there is some change. Okay, now stop talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. Go back. <laughs> All right. You guys know the drill. What are we going to do? <laughs> Shot. This is called Shot the Noob. He's a noob. It's tough to be a speaker at DEF CON. Was it tough? No. Oh, no. He's like, I, I just wrote some shit up and you accepted it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> luck, beginner's luck. All right, well, listen, anyway, we want to thank you for making it as a speaker, and we have our little tradition. So, do DEF CON. Thank you.
Defcon. Defcon. Now let's see you talk. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I was already getting thirsty. <laughs> when I came in here, he did not have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> My accent is getting better with every shot, so. All right. Um, so um, I still have some uh, research going on um, uh, looking at uh, Java isolation. There are some changes in version 7. Um, basically, IBM decided to put the uh, GVM elsewhere. Um, so um, I ran some tests with the same tooling on version 7 release 2, and I could see the same box. So uh, there is not too much lessons learned on the uh, Java isolation. So I still want to look uh, inside and uh, at the moment I'm also analyzing the server side of the GVM to look whether there is still possibility for um, uh, getting more, um, uh, to, to get more access to the system. Um, what I also created is, um, is a common shell for Ace 400 uh, via WebSphere. So if you happen to have um, unsecured uh, IBM WebSphere uh, admin console, uh, you can upload uh, um, that uh, WAR file and you will get a, a command line uh, allowing you for, again, running some uh, comments uh, on Ace 400 and, for example, creating an account or escalating the privileges. Um, I'm also doing some works on uh, MI security, so the uh, assembler level uh, and uh, the isolation between the uh, more virtual part of uh, of the system and the uh, more the, the the hardware layer, so to say. Um, the last, uh, um, oh, um, the last research is uh, 50 to 50 via FTP. Uh, what I found uh, sometimes uh, I'm pen testing environments that are behind the firewall, um, and so you only get access via FTP. Um, still, FTP uh, does allow you for running CL comments uh, and for some other fancy stuff. So um, what I was thinking uh, would be handy to make a kind of 50 to 50 proxy uh, or Java proxy via FTP uh, so that you can also access firewall uh, environments via the open FTP hole. Uh, so that's something I'm working uh, on and probably in a few months you'll see uh, some tooling uh, on the website. All right, uh, just a short summary. Um, don't trust the 50 to 50 security measures only. So uh, there is a lot of uh, information uh, on the uh, hardening of, um, uh, say, uh, green screen. Uh, uh, you can also look at the um, uh, book of um, Shalom Carmel. Um, but uh, don't trust uh, these measures only. Look also on, uh, on Java. Um, and be skeptical of uh, IBM Red Books. Uh, many times what you see is like, uh, yeah, they promote uh, Q password level of 0, 1, or 2. Um, so um, take it with uh, common sense and say uh, after this presentation, uh, look on whether you need to uh, improve your security measures. And visit uh, hackthelegacy.org. Uh, yesterday I uploaded the latest version of the tool. Um, it's GPL version 3 license, so uh, you're free to um, uh, change it. Um, uh, the whole uh, Java project, NetBeans project, is included there, so you can freely use it. I also included already uh, compiled jar, so you can uh, just click and, uh, and open and enjoy. Um, all right, uh, you can find me at, on Twitter, and you can uh, also uh, approach me via the Hack the Legacy Org uh, website. Um, and now it's time for questions. Can you repeat the question?
Ja. The public authority is excluded. Um, the uh, the only thing is that the um, uh, the group profile. If if you use the ownership, uh, if 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 you use one common profile, and if you use, um, um, I'll just show you. Yeah. The, the question is, what's the object authority of the profile I was swapping to? Yeah. So uh, the the problem is if you use if you use the um, um, the owner uh, the ownership for the profile as uh, a star group profile, um, it will still have access via this uh, via the stop group profile. Uh, and as long as you don't um, have um, um, exclude on the list to the to the profile object, you're not able to mitigate it. No, it's uh, it's not an emulator. It's uh, it's port forwarding. So that's uh, this. Uh, oh, the question was uh, whether I'm running an emulator. It's uh, it's just uh, port forwarding to uh, to the Netherlands. Sorry. Okay, the question was whether Java is installed by default. Yes, it is. It's a standard. If if you install uh, if you install client access, uh, you get the JT400 uh, jar uh, you can use. And the problem is all the tooling used by IBM, so the whole client access uh, uh, pack, including iSeries Navigator, is Java based. So it has to be enabled because otherwise you wouldn't be able to use iSeries Navigator. Yeah. Um, I tried only Java, so uh, okay, guys. If there are no other questions, I'm s yeah. Is there any yeah? Sorry? Okay. Um, the question was what ports is Java using? Uh, there is a number of ports. Uh, uh, there is like two or three ports used. Uh, so um, uh, please refer to the uh, IBM uh, um, website. Uh, I don't know them by, by heart. Uh, there are like three, uh, three ports uh, starting with 2000. And then depending on whether you use SSL or not, um, there are also different ports. Okay. Uh, the question was whether I found any mitigations for uh, for that kind of hacks. Um, it's difficult. Um, either you have to have good object security with a lot of excludes. Um, to be honest, if you have an, a legacy environment with these group profiles, usually you should just uh, limit access to the Java ports. Because most of the times the regular users don't need to have access to iSeries Navigator. 
Uh, so you can pretty much limit the access to 50 to 50. Uh, and then depending on whether you use the IBM tooling, which requires like extra ports for this initial, uh, for, for, for the sign, uh, sign on server, uh, uh, um, or you use external tooling like just simple uh, Telnet uh, uh, 50 to 50. Uh, you could you could pretty much limit the ports to like 992 for a secure uh, connection. Okay, um, um, I'm available uh, the whole the, the the whole conf. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to approach me. I'll be. Uh, uh, somewhere around here. So, uh, and um, anyway, you can uh, you can just send me an email or uh, Twitter or uh, uh, just look at the on the website. All right, thanks a lot.